to Independent Chick. Today we are doing our Pride special, and as we talked about earlier, today is about dispelling stereotypes and having an open and honest conversation with the LGBT community. I hope I got that right. So first off, we have Les, and we have Ro, and we have Michelle. So we're just going to start off, and you can just kind of introduce yourself and who you are. I'm You're Les. Um, my name is Les. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm a I'm a gay male. And um, yeah, yeah. I work. I work. I work as <laughs> Who a. Who are you? <laughs> uh, I, I work as a hairstylist, and um, I've been with my partner Robbie for almost five years now, and we're getting married on uh, June 29th. Awesome! Congratulations. Thank you. All right, and Ro. Hey, uh, my name is Ro Walker Mills. Um, I'm a musician. I'm an advocate. Um, and I'm here to just talk about my experience as a transgender man. Okay. Yeah. And I'm Michelle. I'm a two-spirit uh, Aboriginal woman who really doesn't identify that way, but I, I identify more as a, an Aboriginal woman who loves women. Right. Uh, I'm a social worker by trade, student, uh, musician, artist, advocate, sometimes philanthropist. Uh, like that. And I really... You know, I'm looking forward to the conversation that we're about to have today. It's, uh, yeah. It'll be nice. There's a lot of controversial questions I feel within the community. Are there any questions that you might feel that um, make you feel uncomfortable or annoyed? Or are you really like, ask me anything? <laughs> well, if you're looking at me, people like to ask me and other trans people lots of uh, questions, especially about our bodies, because that's that's yeah. what's different uh, about about us usually. Um, I usually like people to ask permission before they ask me questions about oh, okay. my, my body, but uh, I'm an open book. Pretty because much. it's pretty. That's pretty. It's personal. Uh, yeah. Of course. And I, if somebody came up to me and asked me a question about my body, I'd. I'll be calling 911. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you know, we, we all have the right to our bodies, our yeah. privacy, but people yeah. like to poke in there, yeah. Yeah. Sure. So what is the difference between two-spirited um, lesbian and transgender? How does that differ? Well, I mean, there's there's a huge difference in it. Right. Like, you know, we, we were talking earlier, you know, um, identifying yourself is not about who you're sleeping with. You know, as a two-spirit woman, um, you know, what it embodies is is being able to to have that wholeness. Uh, and in Aboriginal culture, we talk about you know how everything is whole and we're all connected through the circle. Um, we embody the male, we embody the female, the water, the fire, the the moon, the sun, and it really is a culmination of all that and and how that reflects in our spirituality, what we believe, um, what we perceive, and and how you know. Uh, for me, how I choose to act, you know, out of kindness rather than hatred, you know, it's two, a lot of that. Two spirit is very, very integrated into the Aboriginal culture. Yep. It's a, it's more of a multifaceted identity, I would say. Yeah, um, for sure. How does that differ from a lesbian? Because it's the same. I guess that go more into the sexual aspect of it. Well, yeah. lesbian is more like you know, you you identify as a woman who who sleeps with women or who uh, like attracted, attracted to, to women or okay, attra attracted to that female more spiritual and, and two spirit is it, it can embody female it can embody male and it's 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 really okay. a cultural two aspect two spirit of and it. transgender are both gender identities they're not sexualities they're more, more about who you are versus who you sleep with right. mm -hmm. so it's kind of actually it can be kind of bad that they're they're coined into the lgbt community because um, being lesbian and gay is completely different than being trans or two-spirit. Okay. They're, they're, they don't have to come together. They're very separate. All right. So we're talking a little bit about the sexual aspect within um, the LGBT community. First off, let's ask this question before we get into my question. What is the full title? LGBTQ or LGBT or gay community? Well. You know, I, I went for an interview one time when I lived down in the States and I got the, the, a whole list of letters put before me and said, Michelle, what does that mean? And it was lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, ally. So there was a, and two spirits, so there was a whole bunch. Right. You know? yeah. yeah. There's a huge alphabet Do you ever soup. introduce yeah. yourself as that? Like, I am... Da, 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 da. No, but I often make jokes that I've at one point identified as one, almost all of them at some point <laughs> in my life. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what they usually do is, yeah. you know, LGBT is pretty standard. Yeah. If you throw an asterisk at the end of there, that that little symbol means all the rest. So sometimes you'll see LGBT asterisks, and that symbol yeah. is supposed oh, to mean 
all the Everything. stuff after, yeah. Right. yeah. Nobody has the time to say all the Yeah, things. we <laughs> always make, our community <laughs> makes jokes about it all Mar the time. Marbles in your mouth. Yeah. 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 All a, right. So within the com within the gay community, um, a lot of the, the stereotypes is, is that it's n a non-monogamous type of community, but you are in a monogamous relationship for five years now. How do you feel about that stereotype? Uh, I feel that it's, it's untrue. Yeah. Uh, I think part of the beauty of the G, uh, oh, sorry, LGBT, now I'm screwing <laughs> it up, community, is that we are so diverse in which there are couples that are very happy that mm -hmm. are in non-monogamous situations, but then there are just as many, if not more, that are very happy just with one another. Mm -hmm. So I just find that it's personal and has nothing to do with what community we actually belong to. Mm -hmm. It's just people's preference and their lifestyle. Right. What do you and, and the, I'm sorry, as I yeah. say, and that can go not only into the gay community, uh, it can go into the straight communities. So you got swingers, mm -hmm. you know, exactly. so, they, so they go both ways. And, I think the main difference so. is that our community is very sex positive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we put a huge focus right. on being sure. celebrating sex as a positive part of our life. Mm -hmm. um, and it tends to come back to sex with, with the LGBT community because mm -hmm. a lot of the identities are focused on who you're having sex with. Well, right. and also, too, I think that it comes to about the protection aspect of it, too. Correct? For sure. I also find that with, um, with, if you look at a heterosexual couple and then a homosexual couple, the only part that's really differentiating us is that one is a male and female and one is two men or two women. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people were automatically focused on what is different. Yeah. So everything else is the same. I go to work nine to five, so do they, yeah. so do my partner. We all come home and have dinner together. The only thing that's different is that I'm sleeping with a male mm -hmm. and they may be sleeping with a female or someone of the opposite gender. What do you think about when you think of the word marriage? I just think about two people making a commitment to spend mm -hmm. the rest of their lives together. Mm -hmm. That they're wanting to build a family and work um, work on their relationship to make it last. It's a commitment to um, just a commitment to be happy together and make all the efforts that you need to do and it's not always not always fun, not always easy, mm -hmm. but at the end of the <laughs> at the end of the day it's worth it. Better. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I congratulate you on being engaged and of course like marriage is about celebrating love ultimately. So, uh, congrats for that. Thank but you. marriage in our community, you know, is very mm, it's question. controversial. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're still fighting for marriage equality. We're lucky here in Canada that we, right. we have that, but the states is different. The states is yes. very different. Yeah. yeah. Very different. They, they legislate things per state, so the yep. change doesn't happen as quickly there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. If you ask someone in Texas what marriage looks like, I bet you they tell you something a lot different. Yeah. But I mean, uh, I personally think marriage is overrated. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> good luck, buddy. <laughs> Within uh, community, uh, I was talking to a few people about this, is that, that drugs and alcohol is a stereotype as well, that it's something that's bigger within the community. How do you feel about that? Do you feel like it's a stereotype or it is an issue where some people are using that avenue to cope? Well, I mean, I know when I first came out, I was drinking. I haven't drank now really for like 25 years. Mm -hmm. I've been out 29. So, I mean, I don't use alcohol as a means to, to go out and, and do things. I do see that a lot of young people um, these days are actually abstaining from alcohol and drugs and choosing a healthier lifestyle. But then again, like in any community, there are those that, that are using that, that, that feel they need that to, to cope with life and the stressors and, and, and uh, their coming of age. All right. Oh, well, it, there's no doubt that party and play is kind of the term that coined in the gay male community. That it, uh, I'm not going to say that it's a, like a, a correct stereotype, but it's definitely prevalent in the community. There are people who choose to party and play, meaning they participate in drugs or alcohol and have sex. But there's safe ways to do that, and I think that they have every right to, to do that if they want to do that safely. And if they're both consenting adults, I have no problem with that. Um, obviously. Uh, everyone is capable of abusing drugs and alcohol yeah. to cope. Our community definitely has more levels of anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. It's proven. So yeah, I would uh, d definitely higher suicide, especially in the trans community, very yeah. high. Um, so yeah, there would definitely be more coping, coping things happening mm -hmm. for sure. I wouldn't doubt that yet. Yeah. 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 I found that like my personal experience is I've never touched drugs in my life, mm -hmm. ever. Uh, I've always been surrounded by them to an extent uh, growing up. 
and I just never really felt the need mm -hmm. to touch them. How alcohol, on the other hand, was something that I did get a little bit out of out of control with. Mm -hmm. For was that a coping thing or just? Um, I think a lot of it. I, th I think a lot of <laughs> it are. for me is just like you know I grew up out in Gimli, so a smaller town. I never okay. really had a lot of exposure to a GLBT group mm -hmm. or something. So I actually didn't come out until I moved to Winnipeg, mm -hmm. uh, just because I didn't want to deal with what may have I come my way back home. I was harder within a smaller community to come out. Do you think uh, would have been? I think so. Yeah. Uh, there were some people that did. Do people and, know uh, that you're out now from yes. that community? Yeah. Yeah, I'm very. How did they uh, respond to you? Uh, some of them were surprisingly shocked. Yeah. I didn't really get it because I thought it was pretty obvious, but but yeah, right. But but yeah, but for the most yeah. part, like all the people that were my friends are still my friends, and they very much accepted me the way I was, and they pretty much already knew. Okay. Um, I just find that when I came to the city, and I was like, oh wow, I can go, I can go to Geo's, which was an amazing, <laughs> amazing place. I miss it so much. Yeah. Uh, I, I could go to Geo's and I go hang out with people just like me. But then when you get there, what's there is alcohol. So you drink, and then you start drinking and drinking it's and like drinking. It's like any community, right? right? Like it's a part of how we loosen up, and it's a social lubricant. I mean, yeah. it's yeah. legal, right? We're right. allowed to drink when we're eighteen. <laughs> But then I found after a while that I was starting to get a little bit out of control with it. Like it started going from weekends to like during the week and then after mm -hmm. like before and after work and that type of thing. Yeah. And yeah, and then eventually you, you just kind of grow out of it. But I think it's, uh, yeah, I just think it's common, especially when you're wanting to find right. community to belong to. And that's your option mm -hmm. is the gay bar. Yeah. 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 So your coming out story, was it at the time, what, what when was this? <laughs> oh, goodness. I mean, I came out to myself probably at 16 or so. Um, it wasn't until I was 18. Okay. And uh, I didn't start drinking until I was 18. So I, I was drinking a lot and I was drinking every day. Um, and what ended up happening was I overdosed on, on some medications. Okay. Uh, I had found out uh, when I was 12 that my uh, father killed himself uh, because his wife left him for another woman. So I had a lot of guilt in terms oh, of yeah. trying to not only grieve my father's death, but to be the type of person that he killed himself for. Um, and so when I was 18, I ended up overdosing, uh, lying in St. Boniface Hospital, I remember, and um, I can hear my mom yelling a, a bunch of stuff to nurses, and they're saying, you know, this is what happens before they die, and she, getting my mom prepared. And I'm laying there, and my dad was at the head of my bed. And he's, Missy, it's not time yet. You, you have things you need to do, and I can't take you with me. And I ended up waking up the next day, um, having a doctor say, do you need to go to the psych ward? And I'm like, no, mm -hmm. um, and was released. Uh, and, and then from there, you know, continued to drink a little, little bit, um, and then came out to myself, mm -hmm. really, in terms of who I identified as. Um, and it wasn't until probably about six months later, my mom phoned me and said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm hanging out with so-and-so. Yeah. And then she's like, Michelle, are you gay? They always know. Moms yeah. always yeah. know. And I'm like, mom? <laughs> like, like really in disbelief. And she's like, well, I'm asking you an honest question. I'd like an yeah. honest answer. Yeah. And I'm like, well, yeah. She goes, well, I knew that since you were like two. Yeah. And oh, I'm really? like, oh, you know, oh. like what a weight off. But I mean, mm -hmm. a whole bunch of stuff came after that, you know, that was in my, within my family that is not so good, but not so bad, I suppose. Okay. Yeah. All right. And what was you said? It was complicated. You said it's complicated. Co coming out. Yeah. Is coming very out. complicated. Yeah. yeah. Well, I came out initially at 18 again. And your mom knew. My mom knew. Yeah. I came out as I initially came out as a lesbian because I, at the time I was uh, still identifying as a woman. Um, so I, I my best guess of what I could understand what was going on in terms of what I was feeling is that I was attracted to other women yeah. and that I was a woman. So that I, you know. I didn't really like the term lesbian, I never really have, uh, but it was my best fit at the time. She was kind of like, nothing's gonna change, we already knew, we mm -hmm. love you, this is great. Uh, fast forward a couple years later and uh, I'm coming into my trans identity, came out to her as trans. Uh, that reaction didn't go as well. Okay. Um, I had to move out uh, yeah. immediately, but we have a better relationship now. Uh, but I think that for trans people, coming out is a really a daily activity. Uh, most people, when they meet me now, don't necessarily know that I'm transgender. It comes up often in things like paperwork, legal forms. Uh, mm -hmm. My lingering gender marker still says F for now. Um, I'm in the process of changing it, so okay. coming out's a daily thing for me. 
All right. Yeah. So now you had some YouTube footage mm -hmm. about your transition, and, and this clip we're going to see is about you taking hormone injections. Is this what it is? And, and, yeah. and so we're going to take a quick look at that, and we'll be we'll take a look at it. Two years of injecting this testosterone into my body and I just wanted to tell uh, anyone who listens to my channel that it's not easy to do that to yourself every week every two weeks depending on what your your dosage is um, and it's not necessarily that you know it's painful um, because it's a needle. A needle is a needle. Most people are just afraid of it in general. But I just wanted to say that this represents the struggle. You know, the the act of breaking your own skin and putting something into your body that really makes you who you are or lets you become this person is a heavy, heavy thing. And oftentimes when I am having trouble giving myself my needle, which has been a lot more lately, um, it's not because I'm afraid of it, the pain. It's because of what it represents. That's all. That's all I really wanted to say. All right, so that was a clip of Ro Walker Mills talking about his transition. What were you going through at that moment? Uh, I was about to give myself uh, my bi-weekly injection. So every two weeks I inject hormone of testosterone. All it is is it's basically exactly like testosterone you'd get uh, from a biological male. So mm -hmm. It's in some oil. Um, I inject it uh, because it's the, the quickest method. It's the most often prescribed. Um, but in that moment, I'm really talking about how, how challenging it is, not just giving yourself a needle, which most people don't like needles anyway. Yeah. Um, it's the mental thing. It's, it's telling it's myself. It's painful. Well, it's painful uh, physically just because needles suck. Yeah. <laughs> but it's more about the fact that uh, I know that it's something that I have to do that other people don't have to do. Um, and it's part of, I think, uh, a ritual of mine where it's, uh, it's like giving respect to my identity. I know I have to do this needle. It's something that most people don't have to do. Um, and it, it's part of the mental part of being trans. It's a, it's a, it can be a battle. It's, you know, it's, it's... Uh, can you talk about that battle? Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's just challenging to know that you have to do something that most people don't have to do just to be who you are. Mm -hmm. um, and so every time I have to do that needle, I think about that. And uh, sometimes it, it just feels not fair. All right. That's all. As we wrap things up, if somebody is watching the show today and they might be going through um, a battle, what advice would you give them today? I would probably say don't let, don't let anybody tell you who you should be. Uh, I think all of us have gone through periods in which we let people do that to us and it did not it did not serve us very well and we ended up just being who we are anyways and we're much happier for it. So I'd say s skip the skip the middleman, be who you are and uh, don't let anyone tell you different. All right. That's great advice, I like that. Uh, yeah, I would definitely say just be yourself. Uh, if I could have rewind time and go back to high school, I would have came out in high school um, because I think that the the youth that are doing that now, coming out in their high schools, are doing a huge justice to themselves and to their communities by being themselves so young and being so true to themselves. So if that's you, keep doing it. For sure. I, I would say just be who you are. Love who you want to love. Um, there's no right, there's no wrong. Um, you know, and, and turn to somebody. If you're having a hard time, you know, turn to somebody that you know um, and, and, and talk to somebody, you know, don't, don't do it alone because it can be a hard road for you. So find somebody to talk to. And Seek out resources in the that's community because right. they are there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Talk, talk, and, and be who you want to be, love who you want to love, and, and basically that's it. All right. Okay. Well, thank you so much for taking the opportunity and trusting me to come on your show. It's been great. <laughs>
for listening to you today. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Dana. You. Thank you. All right, and most of all, do not give up. Keep going. Thank you so much for joining us on Independent Chick. We're going to be right back after this with a performance from Roe Walker Mills. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us here on Independent Chick. Here is Roe Walker Mills with Making Art. I'd like to send this one out to my mom. Thank you for making me believe I could be better than just a basketball player and putting me in art class. It means a lot to me. So here's me making some art. I can't move past the struggle. My words begin to stumble. If I can't move forward from here, then the end is near. Steer clear of your past and future self, bro, cause neither will matter. When you start living your dreams, it shattered their ideas of swagger. Now I got the moves like Jagger. <laughs> and yeah, I rap, so I guess I'm a cracker. A point on the ladder, quit with all the chatter. My skin color, well, it shouldn't matter. Always live my life fast. Pass by them, leave them in the past. Then lapped them with rap. Didn't give a crap when they diagnosed me handicapped. Oh snap, backs and tattoos. I won't slack, I can't lose. I can rap, I'm not black. Man, I do bruise, I do use. Mostly weed and booze, never felt the need to choose. That's why I got the best of everything. All you got left from him is that ring. <laughs> Tell me, did he really make your heart sing? Or were you sick of questioning what your life would be like? Being alone, commit to sitting at home, listening to a drone, faking every moan. Mortgage alone and two kids, daydreaming about everything you could have did. Who? Me. Cause it's looking like my questions never run out. Always got a doubt about whether I'm taking the right route. I left behind some friends who turn haters. My advice, try some self-love, turn masturbators. Throw it up, catch you later, I'm out for blood. Well then eat steak rare, breed here. Cause it can't master fake. Chances in life, well those you gotta take. Cause you're only young enough to jump into the leaves before you gotta rake. 10,000 hours of lies, it must be hard to get by. Waking up must be tough, man. Breaking up must be rough, man. When you're left starting over, looking for your other half. Funny when people say that kind of shit, just gotta laugh. Look inside yourself, won't need none of that. Feeling at home alone without a welcome mat. Brotherhood without the fret. I pledge allegiance to the Delta Core. Dreams and desires, we explore. Never afraid to have a change of heart. I live my life to the fullest, making art. Oh snap, I can rap, who would have thought? Hardwired to be a man with a soft spot. I kind of like the taste of egg, now I could do without the Christmas cheer. I told you before, I make it rain, dear. Diary, I just want to be accepted. My community's health not to be neglected. Prefer pronouns to be respected. Innocent until proven guilty or otherwise suspected. See, it's all subjective. Taking place within the mind, got modified, settled in, and colonized. End up with two separate circles, stacked colon size, one above the other. Brother from another mother, now means I see a fire and I'm a smother. Keep showing your true colors, don't be afraid. It ain't always just about getting paid or getting laid. You don't need a cock to be cocky, pretty to smile. Just be proud to be different, stand out all the while. Pay him no attention, leave him in denial. This is the rhythm of my life. Truth is, I probably never have a wife caught up in my hour strife. Tied up like a noose without a knife. Never would have guessed that the first time I'd feel less would come from my own community. She wanted to hate, already had immunity. Never could quite pronounce your name, but we both know you punched me. Cause you got some shame and that's a shame Cause that just means we could have settled our differences By realizing that we're just the same players In this duck life game Make an impression on the game like you did to my heart Girls hopped on and off my But you were down from the start So don't dart out on me now I just hit the with this girl going on me I'm feeling too young to have this frown on me Mama wanted to wait So she threw a gown on me Then kicked me out Now put a crown on me Cause I'll just break it Toss it out into the crowd. 
dedicated to those mean girls. They took my heart. Had all the right looks, probably knew they wronged me from the start. Here it is, me making art. Thank you. Thank you.